All right guys, so this is gonna be the first video of the Building the Subaru Through the Stages series. For today's video, we're doing stage zero, which is all the stock components, um, just a tune. So we're gonna see how much power we can get with all these stock bits, and we're gonna see how much power we can make out of all that. This shouldn't be too hard of a tune to work out, just since you're not changing any of the air-fuel ratio relationships, so. A lot of those uh, characteristics will stay the same. So we're just gonna have to modify our boost target tables, our wastegate duty cycle tables to hit those targets, um, modify the timing tables a little bit as well. So I'm gonna show you the tuning process for this stuff. And then we're going to do a virtual dyno. Should be interesting. I'm very curious to see the difference that this makes. Um, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. All right, so just to um, show you guys kind of um, what we're starting with here for the stage zero tune. I'm going to go through um, this ROM and show you what I changed. So first things first we got here, I did add a uh, MERP mod to the ECU um, ROM. This is done by using an app called um, SharpTune, I believe. You download the MERP mod package and then you open up SharpTune and you open the, the ROM that you want the MERP mod to be on. And then you open up Merp Mod on SharpTune and it combines them basically and then it gives you a Merp Mod um, tune. And f depending on what ECU version you have, depends on what options you get with Merp Mod tune. For my car, um, there is a speed density um, feature which we're not using right now. Uh, and then there's also launch control and flat foot shifting. So that's the main reason I downloaded the Merp Mod. So we enabled flat foot shifting mode, which lets you um, keep your foot floored on the gas pedal and you just have to push the clutch in and shift and it cuts the fueling um, for a second, uh, basically cuts the rev limit uh, so you could shift. And then, um, so we engaged that. We input all the information it wants, uh, set up a launch control rev limit for 4,500 RPMs. And then I put in the gear ratios of the STI six speed for the flat foot shifting to calculate it. Um, so we got that. We changed the target boost. So um, I don't think we're gonna hit 16 PSI, which is the goal. So we're changing the target boost um, from stock just a little bit. So increasing the max boost pressure. So that's gonna give us a little bit of power. To get that extra boost, the wastegate duty cycle needs some tweaking. So um, the initial and max wastegate duty cycle tables are bumped up. For the primary open loop fueling, I kind of took all the values that were underneath 11 and bumped them up to 11. So everything, the lowest values here is 11 except for this little area, which um, was a spot that I had previously modified just because it was like a dip in the fuel system or something like that. I don't really remember exactly. We pulled out a little bit of timing just to uh, make things safe and then we could add it back in later. So that's what we're starting with as a baseline we're going to go do some tuning and get everything dialed in and then uh, we can make some changes and do our virtual dyno last pass the max boost pressure was um 13.5 psi so like i said we're definitely not hitting that target boost so i'm going to change that table and also there is some knocking up at the higher rpms but on the stock pull there was also some knocking um so i think this is probably just noise but just in case i lowered the timing in this area right here uh, a couple degrees and then smoothed out the graph just to make it make it nice and smooth. Um, and I think that should be good. I didn't hear any knock or anything audibly, so I, th I, don't, I think it was just noise. Um, if you look at the, um, the wastegate duty cycle, it is maxing out at 90, which is what I had it set 90% right away. So this is as much boost as we're gonna get out of this turbo. So I'm gonna change the, um, the table to accommodate those numbers, uh, I'm gonna target a little higher. So I'm gonna target 14 PSI uh, instead of 16. And I think we'll 
call that good as far as a tune goes. Um, put it on there, just make sure it's good. And then I'll do a uh, virtual dyno pull. So here's the new boost table. Um, sorry, I'm not using the uh, screen recorder, but uh, I just took the values that were set at 16 and 15, anything higher than 14, I just set it to 14. I uh, made sure it was a little smoother. So um, that should be a better target. So it won't be stressing the engine out trying to get to those targets. Um, the unobtainable targets and I don't really like messing with timing too much just because I don't have my 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 uh, knock audio knock detection right now so I'm not gonna be uh, trying to get too much more timing out of it I pulled some timing out of it and increased the boost quite a bit so like the the previous run with the stock tune it made 10 psi this run it made 13 and a half so three and a half psi of boost increase I think is equivalent to less than four degrees of timing so we're going to call that good um, and then uh, we're going to flash this on, do a pull and check the virtual dyno see what it says. Hopefully there's a power increase. Okay, so I went back in after the last pull and I changed the timing one more time just because I was getting suspicious about the location of the, the, the knocking that was being detected and it was in the same spots. Um, so I wanted to lower the timing a little bit more. So I came in and I, I changed the timing again just a little bit. So I'm just going to show you what the timing table looks like now. So here's what it looks like in this area right here. I basically lowered it, um, I think it was at 22, so I lowered it to 20, um, just basically dropping it down two more uh, degrees, and then smoothed it out again, uh, just it, just to make it a little bit more safe, and uh, it seems to be doing okay. I could probably go a little lower if I want to make the tune really safe, but I think this is within usable range. <clears throat> so that's what I did for that, and then, uh, the virtual dyno results are very interesting, so I'm going to show you them one at a time just to, uh, I guess, build suspense here. Alright, so if you look at the stock tune right here in, in red, um, you can see at um, 5400 RPMs, the peak horsepower was 184 wheel horsepower and peak torque was 197 foot-pounds at 4167 RPMs. Um, and it hit a max boost pressure of 10.2 psi. So this is about what I would expect for the stock um, tune. And now let's look at the um, stage zero tune by itself. So we see 196 wheel horsepower at 5,000 RPMs and 203 foot-pounds of torque at 4,900 RPMs, uh, which is not that much of a power increase. So that's a 12 horsepower increase and a, and a six foot pounds of torque increase, which is not very much. Oh, and also uh, the peak boost pressure was 13.4 PSI, like we were targeting. So yeah, why is the, the power gain not that much? Um, I'm telling you from in the car, it feels like it makes a lot more power than 10 horsepower difference, but that is all in the tune. So when I show you both tables together, you'll see how much of a difference it is. Even though you only see 10 wheel horsepower, what really matters is the shape of the curve. So let me add the stock tune to here. So we have the stock tune in red and the um, stage zero tune in blue. So you can see the area under the curve is much larger for the stage zero tune and that's why it feels like it has a lot more horsepower because after 4,000 RPMs, um, instead of the power kind of petering off, it's still making power and still making torque. Um, <clears throat> and right here, you can see with the torque, it peaks out at um, 4,000 4, RPMs, but with the um, stage zero tune, the torque peaks at 4,900 RPMs, almost 5,000 RPMs. So you have a whole extra 1,000 RPMs of a flat torque curve before it starts to drop off and the horsepower curve peaks at um, 5,000 but it kind of holds steady almost all the way to uh, to redline versus before 
it peaks at 40 uh 5400 and it just falls off immediately so the stage zero tune even though like on on paper the number is not that much of a difference 12 horsepower is not a very big difference and usually 12 horsepower is hardly noticeable but when you have uh, a graph like this where you can see you just have so much more area under the curve for both the torque and the horsepower um, that's where you get the better feel and the car does feel a lot better and it runs smoother it looks it, it feels a lot better with this tune than it does with the stock tune so hopefully that explains it so um, that's the stage zero tune and the next step is going to be to take the car to the drag strip and see how these two different tunes uh, compare in the real world We got two step this time and flat foot shifting, so we'll see what difference that makes. Not a very good difference. So that's kind of inconclusive, but it was a bad launch. So we'll try again. I just hate for the test to be coming down to, to my inconsistencies with launching the car, but with this little power, it's kind of hard to get a good launch when you have a clutch that's rated for 800 foot pounds of torque. To recap stock we made 184 wheel horsepower 197 foot pounds of torque with the stage zero tune we made 196 wheel horsepower and 203 foot pounds of torque but um, as shown in the dyno graphs there was a lot more area under the curve for the stage zero tune so the car overall felt faster um, and it had power in you know wider ranges of the power band the translation to times on the drag strip was not too obvious and it's also, um, I was having a very hard time getting a good launch because the uh, the clutch that's in there is rated for like 800 foot pounds of torque. So once it grabs, it grabs really hard and it um, the engine doesn't make enough power to like overcome that hard grab. So uh, it just kind of bogs. Um, but as we get through the power range of the launching will become easier and easier. But we did see an average time increase so the average eighth mile time for the base stock tune was 10.77 um and then for the stage zero our average time was 10.55 um there's a little bit of an increase there not anything crazy but it's it also wasn't really a crazy increase in power either so 
is a stage zero tune worth it? Um, I think so. I don't think Cobb or any companies like that make a stage zero tune. I think you have to buy like a package. I think at one point they did make stage zero tunes, but um, I think it's worth it. Um, it makes the car feel so much better than stock and it makes it feel, um, you know, more like an enthusiast car than anything. Um, you don't get much more power from it, but it just, the driving experience is so much better. Um, and you know, if you buy a tuner, get a stage zero tune, you know, you're not investing too much money and then you can save up for stage one or stage two or whatever, um, and have fun with it while you save up. But yeah. So that was uh, stage zero. I think the results were pretty interesting. So next video is going to be stage one where we're going to install a Cobb short, Cobb short ram intake and, um, do another tune and we're going to see what differences that makes. So stay tuned for that video and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notified when that video comes up. Um, if you like the video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you know someone who might find this video interesting, please share it with them. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.